All right, hey, it's Rob, and I'm here just to give an update from the video I posted yesterday. We did a little summit on the Gibson Modern guitar. I was lucky enough to have these legendary figures in the world of vintage guitar, including Dan Earlwine and George Groon. They were gracious enough to come onto my YouTube channel and kind of share their opinions about what they uh, thought regarding the authenticity of this one specific Gibson Modern guitar that surfaced in Ann Arbor, Michigan around 1972. Usually the story starts there with Dan Earlwine, who we were lucky enough to hear from, but I have a little bit of the story that even goes before then, and now uh, I can add to it because I actually spoke to Jack, who claims he is the owner of the guitar, who sold it to Dan Earlwine and got the ball rolling on this mysterious vintage Gibson Modern type guitar. I'm just gonna share Jack's story here. He shared it with me and hopefully it's okay for me to do that. And uh, we're just gonna kind of add a little bit, another layer. I had a teacher that used to say, we're gonna weave another thread in the tapestry of learning. So that's what we're doing today. Anyway, Jack is a guitarist in Colorado. He's in his early seventies. And uh, in 1968, he says, he doesn't remember where he got it from or who he got it from, but he purchased this, what he called a project. It had no electronics, it had no finish, the headstock was busted off, but he knew enough to know that it was some sort of unique Gibson guitar. And uh, his story is that 1968 he bought it and maybe a year later or something, he took it to the Gibson factory in Kalamazoo. Now Gibson was known to repair their own guitars. You could literally walk up to the factory and say, hey, this is busted, or I wanna change something, or I wanna refinish it. Fender did that too. They did a lot of refinishes. People didn't like the color of a guitar. Well, they would just paint it something else for you. So his story is that he took this project guitar, which turned out to be something that looked like a Gibson Modern, and he took it to Gibson, and he said, hey, I wanna get this thing fixed up. It has no headstock, it was busted off. I wanna get it painted black and put back together. And he said the repair person there identified it as a Gibson Modern, knew what it was, said, you know, was surprised to see it. He said it was a very rare guitar. Took it in and he worked on it for a while. He said something like six months or something, I don't know. But anyway, they had the guitar for a while. In that time, they swapped out the neck for what most people say is a Melody Maker neck. It's an unbound rosewood neck. To me, it looks like an SG or a Les Paul neck, but I'm not sure. Anyway, they changed the neck out on this guitar. He asked them to paint it black. They made a custom pickguard for it, which is unusual because it doesn't look like any kind of pickguard that Gibson would have made, but this is his story. He says he moved up the front pickup, the pickup by the neck, he moved it closer, you know, pretty much flush up with the neck, which, you know, would jibe with the reports that there was routing and other work done underneath this pick guard. Maybe they had it covered up. So whoever was at Gibson made this custom pick guard just to cover all the stuff underneath that they didn't want to see. He said he owned the guitar for a few years. His story was that uh, the person he bought it from told him that he got it from this guy, Ralph Cole from the band Lighthouse. Now we've spoken to Ralph Cole you know, as early as uh, yesterday, we, we uh, you know, reached out to him and, um, or I mean, as recently as yesterday, we reached out to him and uh, he said he doesn't know anything about it. Ralph Cole did work at Gibson in 1967 and 1968 around the same time. So, you know, to me, it seems like he could be a person that might have something to do with this story, although he claims he doesn't. A lot of people were dumpster diving at Gibson and have been, you know, probably since the factory w was uh, put up in Kalamazoo. So um, at any point, someone could have come by, taken some scrap wood out of the dumpster at Gibson and sold it on to somebody. It doesn't have to specifically be this guy, Ralph Cole, but he is named in this story. So we did our due diligence and spoke to him yesterday. Anyway, that's Jack's story. He had the guitar for a little while. He got it fixed up. He said he had it painted. They put the pick guard on. They put it back together, wired it up, put the new neck on it. And it was a playable working guitar that he played in bands and things like that. Sadly, he doesn't think he has any pictures, but he is looking, who knows, maybe he'll find one someday. Anyway, and then the story goes on from there that he sold it to Dan Earlwine, who uh, 
paid, you know, uh, $175 or something for it was the reported price. His story is that he traded it for a guitar. I've heard he traded it for a Martin guitar. Told, today he told me he traded it for an Epiphone jazz box guitar. Again, this is 50 years ago and you know, you gotta give people a little leeway. It's been a long time. And uh, that's where we are with this story. So um, I have confirmed through a couple of Jack's friends that yes, they saw this guitar. They confirmed that, uh, you know, he definitely owned it and, you know, they were aware of it. They didn't know what it was. It was unique and interesting. And as far as Jack is concerned, this is an original Gibson Modern, which, of course, would be worth millions and millions of dollars if it was ever, <laughs> you know, actually, uh, I'm listening to my dog cough out there. If it was actually, you know, verified as being an original example of the Modern, now... Who knows if this will ever happen? Last I heard again, it's in Tokyo, but uh, it hasn't been looked at or examined in many years. And you know, when it is by people, they pretty much conclude that it's not original, but who knows? If ever there was an original one, this may have been or may be it. So that's Jack's story. I'm gonna finish up here. That's where we're at with this thing. And uh, I'll come back on if more uh, information surfaces about this uh, intriguing guitar mystery. All right, take care, thanks.